Hi, this is Jeff, and in this screencast I'll show you how to build your own conversation interaction in Articulate Storyline. Now, Articulate Engage users already know the uh, conversation uh, interaction, the Studio 13 users anyway, and it looks somewhat like this. You've got your introduction text, and you've got multiple steps of the conversation. And you can add a character which has multiple expressions here. So that's super easy for, for non-technical users, but unfortunately, Storyline does not have an interaction like this built in. So we're going to create one ourselves. Now, and the cool thing of building it yourself is that you also uh, can uh, create your own design. One of the things that I feel in the engage interaction is that the persons are too small, and I really want to bring them up close and personal. So I can really read their uh, facial expressions and get a, a, a connection with them. So in this example, we're going to build something like this. So how do we do that? Let's take a look. So to build this, it's a couple of simple steps, really. First, we want to select our characters, and we can do that by going to the Insert tab and selecting a character. It can be an illustrated or a photographic character, whatever you like. <clears throat> and as you can see, there are a multitude of characters here. And the cool thing is you can select headshot, torso, or full, but headshot is actually really what we want because I want to put them in a circle. And I can select a pose from all the available poses. So there's quite a lot to choose from. So you can really make that uh, work for you in any way you need. Now, I've already selected three of my characters that I wanted to use. And <clears throat> as you can see, they're uh, of different sizes. And especially, I've resized them a bit already, but if you just put them on the canvas, uh, this guy here is much bigger than uh, than this picture so you really want to make sure that the heads are about the same size and how can you do that uh, there's an easy trick if you go to the view tab in the top and you turn on your guides you can actually create uh, guides where you can realign them as you can see I created a guide for the top of the head and for the chin and basically you know I put them in between to see if that is about the same size and you know, I usually eyeball it so it's approximately the same you know it doesn't really matter a couple of pixels here and there but that's really simple and to to add guides it's just a matter of selecting your guide holding down the control key and pulling it down and as you can see I've created another guide now if I don't want to use it I'll just grab it again without the control key and just move it off screen so that's how you create guides and can align stuff so so these characters are about the same head size I'm happy with that then I'm going to do right click, save as picture. And as you can see, I already did that for all three images. So I saved them as one, two, three. These are the steps I want to use them. So that's for, for quick reference. And now they're available as images. Now I want to edit these images and I'm going to do that in PowerPoint. Everybody's got PowerPoint, right? So the easiest way to edit your images, if you want to do some uh, fancy stuff to it, is PowerPoint. You can do some basic stuff in Storyline. But what I'm going to show you, you can only do in PowerPoint. So let's take a look. So I've opened PowerPoint and I've got a blank slide in front of me. And I've added my first picture here. Now let's add the other two. I go to Insert, Picture, and select the other two. There we go. Insert, Picture. So now I've got all three of them. And I'm just going to space them out evenly to work with. So what I want to do is create a full circle with the character inside of it. Now, there's a very cool uh, action in uh, PowerPoint, which is called crop, but you can do some other things with it. You can crop the shape. So if I want to add a picture into a shape, I can just crop the shape. I click oval here, and as you can see, this looks pretty nice. Put on a picture border here, make it a big one. There we go. But it's not exactly what I want. As you can see, the, the lower part of the character, there's an empty space there, and it's not really a perfect circle, as you can see if I click it and I see the height and the width. So what can I do to change that? There's a very other simple feature. I'm going to undo this, and select again, do crop, and I'm going to crop to aspect ratio. And now I can actually move that about in my crop area, so I can set that bottom really to... Uh, there we go. And then I'm going to say crop to shape. 
And as you can see, I've selected it now. The height and the width is exactly the same. So that's exactly what I want. I'm going to turn on my picture border, make it nice and thick. And there we go. So this is already so a little bit of what I want to have, right? And I can actually fill the background as well. And I can do that by right clicking the image, say format picture, go to fill, solid fill or a gradient fill, and you can see what's happening right here. So I can even have a picture fill. So you can really play with that uh, and, and make it really something that you need. You know, this, this, this looks kind of nice. I'm going to keep it like this. Okay, now let's do the same thing for the other characters. Select the, the person, crop to aspect ratio one by one and make sure that he's actually crop per perfectly. Do the same thing. Now crop the shape. Nice and circular. And one of the cool things I can do now is format shape and paste it. And as you can see, he gets the same uh, background and the same border. So that was quick, right? Now let's try that again. Select my character, double click it to get the crop functionality, crop to aspect ratio one by one, move her down a little bit, perfect. Click outside of the cropping area to finalize it, crop to shape, perfect. And again, I select my character here, go to the format painter, boom, done. And as you can see, they're not exactly the same size because this one was a bit smaller. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to resize them all to the smallest one. So that's what I need to have. Perfect. Now they're all exactly the same size. And I can start using them in my uh, storyline course. Again, I right click the image, save as picture. And uh, give the name step one. Save as picture. Step two. Save as picture. Step three. So that's it. I've created my pictures with the background and a border. Perfect. Now let's go work on them in Storyline. So now that we've prepared these images in PowerPoint, we can insert them via the Insert tab, so Insert Picture, and select the image that we want. But we can also just copy and paste them directly from PowerPoint. So I can just grab this one, Control C, Control V. So that's nice and fast. Control C, Control V, Control C, Control V. So perfect. I've got them all. Now they're a bit big, so I can just double click them and resize them and say to, to half the size 200 there we go 200 and you see that storyline works with pixels where PowerPoints works with centimeters or inches depending on where you are so I'm gonna spread them over the slide still a little big 150 might be better so as you can see, you can really play with that and to, to, to meet your needs. Whoops, that was 1500, <laughs> 150. So, so this looks pretty nice already. There we go, align them a little bit. And now I can add my caption boxes. So insert, caption, and there are various types of caption boxes, and I like the square ones, so I'm just going to insert one. There we go. And I can grab this little speech part and put it wherever I want it. Move him away a little bit. That's nice. I can format it, and I can use one of the pre-formatted styles. I think I like this one. I will lose the drop shadow. Go to Shape Effects. Shadow none. Perfect. And then I'm just going to copy this. So this one will be the same. And I'm going to copy this one. And I'm going to move this speech part 
that way. Turn up a little bit, move him down. So as you can see, this is really coming to life. So it's now it's just a matter of adding my text and I've got my uh, scene ready. So really simple, right? So you might want to uh, animate this so they follow up on each other. Uh, or you might want to actually make them clickable and use layers. We'll look at how to do that in the next step. So now we've added our content to the slide. Let's add some animation to it. And as you see, I've played around with it a little bit. I've added some text and I uh, formatted it. And what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to pull up the timeline. And as you can see, uh, these are all my options on the timeline here. And one of the things that I urge you to do is start giving names to items on your timeline. So I've got my picture here, uh, which is the first one. So I'm going to call that uh, step one. Step one, caption. And you can see where this is going. Step two, step two, caption. Step three, step three, caption. Now this makes it so much easier to uh, edit your, your, your content when you get back after it to it after a couple of months or weeks or even when you hand it over to someone else they can immediately see what's what so i urge you to do that it's a it's a good habit now what i really want to do is to have this animated <clears throat> so i've got these separate elements i'm, go I'm just going to group them so select them both press ctrl g to group i'm going to do that for the other ones too And as you can see, my timer now is three groups. And again, I'm going to give them a name. Step one, step two, step three. Perfect. Now, let's start adding animation. I'm going to select all three groups and go to the animations pane. And here I get entrance animations and exit animations. So I want to do entrance animations. Let's do a fade in and medium and I want to fade in from the bottom. Perfect. Now, and as you can see, these are all fading in right after each other because nothing has happened on my timeline. But let's see what this looks like right now. You saw that they were all fading in from the bottom. So let's close that and now let's align it in the time. So I first want to do this. I want to make my timeline a little bit longer. So 10 seconds. So after three seconds, I'll have that fly in. And after six seconds, that one. Let's see. So pretty nice, right? You really get a feel for uh, for the animation. There's a, a flow in the text, um, and that's really cool. Um, so play around with this if you like, uh, and in the next step, we're going to see how we can actually make that clickable through layers. So now let's make this an interactive interaction. Um, I've prepared a little something here, and as you can see, I've created some layers which actually have the steps that I want to go through. Um, on my main slide, where we are now, I have added an introduction text. It's a simple text box. And I've created a custom next button. Uh, in this case, I used a marker, but you can use a shape or a regular button, whatever you like, fits your uh, design. Uh, and on the show, uh, when the user clicks the marker, it will show layer step one. The markers there as well so and you can click through that to step two step three and if your conversation goes on beyond three steps that actually fit my screen i have a layer where i just remove the first uh conversation part so step one is removed two and three i've shifted upwards and added a fourth one and so this is how you can just keep the conversation going with additional layers um why did i use the uh custom next button 
I just want to use the next button that already is in my project, right? Well, the thing is, uh, I've noticed that you can only access the next and previous button from the base layer and not from the uh, additional layers you put on. So if I create a trigger here, that will say show layer, step one, when the user clicks a next button, which I've turned off so you won't see it here, it will show this one, but if I have that same trigger to show step two on this layer, it will not work. So hence a custom next button. But as you can see, it's a real simple setup. I've got my base layer, I've got step one, where I've got my uh, step one uh, character, and you, you can see the content from the base layer through it. So this is really uh, placed upon the base layer. Step two, I've got both items here. Step three, all three of these items. And step four, I'm actually removing that first item and adding additional items. Now, if I wanna keep it to three steps, then I can actually play around with what, what the layer shows and not. But that's something for a different time. So let's see what it looks like. So here's my introduction layer, uh, base layer. Step one, step two, step three, and everything will shift up. Step four. So that's it. That's how you can create uh, uh, a conversation interaction in Storyline using your own look and feel. Uh, I hope you like it.